Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Monsignor Lorenzo M. for Manuel. Albacete, Albacete, whatever. I am a president, founder, and sole member of Monsignors for the Third Millennium. <laughs> yes, my dear people, we are an opening group, a group uh, embracing all feeling type, uh, politically, doctrinally, spiritually correct. Uh, we affirm all of you. And it is from this context that we are going to offer to you the New Catechism Show. Yes, the New Catechism Show, and why is it a show? Because we are going to show you the New Catechism. We're not going to read it for you. We assume you know how to read and write. <laughs> and, and, and this is wonderful reading. Some people say, oh no, you uh, can't read it by yourselves. You need all kinds of experts to interpret this for you. It's very mysterious. That, my dear people, is a lot of, as they say in Latin, bull. This is for everyone. We are not advertising this series as something you desperately need because otherwise you will not understand the new catechism. No, we are not that kind of advertisers. We are saying this will help you. This will offer to you our own context, our experience uh, between the lines, the setting, the right way, I think, to position yourself as you open the book and, and read what the church believes in this last part of the tormentous 20th century. Yes, that is why we hope to convey to you more of an experience. We hope actually to retrieve an experience, and that is a key word. My dear people, you have all seen and perhaps still see and admire Sesame Street. As you know, Sesame Street is brought to you every time by a letter. Well, let us say each one of our sessions will be brought to you by a word. And, and this is a good way of remembering what this is all about. Today's, the first session, is in a sense, the word for it applies to all of it. And the word is retrieve to retrieve, to bring back, to make present that which has been lost, faded in the memory. We hope to retrieve to you that experience that will make possible a good reading on your own, a good reflection about the new catechism. But first let me tell you where we are and what's going on. We are located here at a parish of St. Ambrose in the suburbs of Washington, D.C., actually the Diocese of Arlington. These people have been paid to be here. They were walking down the streets. <laughs> they, <laughs> yep, yeah, they came in, you know, people. And, and, and it's kind of like your, your average American suburban parish. The pastor is nowhere to be seen. He is, in fact, <laughs> right now before the Blessed Sacrament, begging mercy for having lent his parish <laughs> to do this kind of thing. You know, when the New Catechism came out in uh, the rest of the world, the, the reviewers everywhere, the most secular, inveterate, anti-church reviewers in France, in Spain, all praise its tone. It said it was a great, the, the, the atmosphere of relaxation, of serenity, it was not strident. It, it was a very joyful and secure and, and, and non-threatening, sorry for the slang, presentation of the faith of the church. So there, there is uh, something to that. I mean, in this century of propaganda, of bitterness, of, of intolerance, of, of, of anger, the, the church proclaims her faith in one of the most solemn ways possible, because this has only been done twice in the history of the church. There are only two worldwide catechisms. It was after the Council of Trent that the church saw the need to put together a universal catechism. And indeed, that catechism was called the Roman Catechism, and it was actually somewhat like this. There weren't questions and answers or anything, but a text containing the whole belief of the Catholic Church, obviously in response to the challenges of the time, and addressed to the pastors 
of the church, which is the reason why this is addressed to the bishops. It is not because it is some kind of secret correspondence and, and therefore we should not look at it. No, it is made clear in the very decree that, that, that issues this catechism that it is meant for everyone. It is addressed to the bishops because that is the traditional way. But, but the tone is, is not frightening. It's uh, something very joyfully said, very joyfully proclaimed, and it aims for you to approach it that way, to approach it with serenity. This is what we're trying to create here, this little atmosphere of serenity, to let it speak for itself. The very first time I read the Catechism in Spanish, I had looked at it in French, but in Spanish I was in Spain, in, in Madrid, and, uh, and I, my luggage had been lost, of course, and I asked for a nearby type uh, convenience stores, and they said, yeah, we have a Siete Once, which is a 7-Eleven, <laughs> which it was, right? <laughs> yes, yes, my dear people. Right there in Madrid, 7-Eleven, the green, the white, you know, it's amazing. But in the middle of all of this, with exactly the same cover, but in Spanish, you know, the new catechism of the Catholic Church. I couldn't believe it, that was a joke. A satire. Well, there it was, and and peep, and I just couldn't. I picked it up, and then uh, there I am. And then another man came over. This is the man coming over. Another man came over and picked it up. He was, I would say, maybe like 33, 34, a young man. Uh, uh, you know, like your stereotype of the young post-Christian uh, secularist, whatever. A little bit drunk. You know, it's Sunday morning. What's he doing up at that hour? Probably hasn't even been to bed. So. But there he is looking around, and he picked it up. And I was kind of like watching, you know, and he was like, yeah, well. Then he said, I guess, he just looked at me. I guess I'm gonna buy it, he said. I, just to find out what I, then he said an expletive, but I will eliminate that. And he said, to find out what I've forgotten to believe. And it was, you know, listen to this what I have forgotten to believe. This catechism he saw as providing to him the opportunity to retrieve what he felt he had lost. The catechism wasn't going to be the one to first put it in him. You see, that is why it is a catechism. Catechetics presumes you have received and accepted the gospel. All the more, that you have been sealed by baptism. But this is afterwards. This is to retrieve that original yes, to re-experience it, maybe to experience it for the first time because it, it occurred when you were not capable of such an experience. And, and this intends to retrieve it so that you will once again remember, these words will be crucial, to remember the memory, the memory of the church. The catechism brings to you the memory of the church, a memory which leads to a presence, to a presence. You retrieve, bring into memory, and suddenly confront a presence. We know whose presence it is, that of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that once again you will meet him, you will have an encounter with him from which comes everything, everything to retrieve. There is a big need for retrieval today and it is one of the reasons why there is a new catechism. It is the reason why there was a Second Vatican Council. I'll tell it to you in terms of a story which Cardinal Ratzinger has in his book, Introduction to Christianity. As you can imagine, not a very advanced book, Introduction to Christianity, it's a very wonderful book. And in there, he quotes, you remember him, those of you who are older than our artist, Mr. Harvey Cox. Mr. Harvey Cox, God knows what he's holding these days. Harvey, if you're watching this, write to me and let me know what you hold now. At, uh, at the time of 1968, he was all, uh, excited about the secular city. A secular was a positive thing at the time, and, and the church was something so archaic. If the church wanted to be heard, it must 
become like everyone else, because otherwise it was stamped obsolete. And so he has this story, which is taken really from Kierkegaard, in which there is this circus that comes into town. And they do the kind of things circus do when coming to town. You know, the bearded lady, the, the animals, the magicians. That night, one of the clowns, which has been working on this, is out, uh, yes, yes, in those days, out for a cigarette. <laughs> now, Lord knows what he would be doing now out. But anyway, <laughs> he was looking out, and suddenly he sees one of these quick forest fires. So the man runs into the town. It's in the middle of the night, and tells the people, uh, run for your lives. You know, the fire is coming, you must be saved, you must escape, get out of here. And the people get up, hey, what the heck's going on? And look out and they see this clown. And what do they think? They think it's part of the act. No one imagines that it's a serious warning because the man is still dressed like a clown. The lesson being, if you want to be heard, then look like the other people. The church, Harvey Cox said, is like that clown. It comes and tells people, you must be saved. But the people. Don't take it seriously. If the church wants to be heard, the church must remove all this archaic look. Ratzinger quotes that, and he says, you know, Mr. Cox did not go far enough. That is not the problem. The outward look is not the main problem we face. The main problem is that nobody knows anymore what a forest fire is, or what it means to run or what it means to be saved. He said, really, if you want to talk about the present situation in that story, you can just imagine a clown or anybody going out there and going, yeah, 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 yeah. what the heck is this? It, it has no meaning. The American author Walker Percy, alas, he's dead, wonderful man. He said, words have been deprived of their meaning. They are there, same words but they no longer mean the same thing. By and large, they mean less. Really what has happened, as we will see throughout this series, the spiritual has become the psychological. And, and a whole dimension, of the depth of interiority, has disappeared from our experience. This is the world in which we live. Everything in it, all its structures of life, are there to affirm this way of thinking and therefore to prevent the other one. In this kind of world, you can come out with a catechism. It has all the words, but they will not mean what they intend to convey. In order to understand, to grasp, you must what? Retrieve the experiences behind the words. The words convey not only information, communication is the conveying of experiences. The catechism is not only to give to you information which you could always store in a computer and look up whenever you need. It's, it's important, obviously, but that is not its main purpose. It is to convey to you, to communicate to you. <laughs> an awesome reality, the very word of God, you see. And, and, but the communication is the communication, a sharing of basic experiences, really about what it means to be a human person. Unfortunately, if everything works against it, then we must create moments, we must find ways, that's what the new evangelization is all about, in order to, to retrieve those experiences. This is what we hope to do in this series.